orange and black. The scene just a short time ago. They were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football as the Bengals get set to do battle with the Jacksonville Jaguars. To kick off for Jacksonville. Fall is in the air and the NFL season is in full swing and we're underway here in week four. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Bengals take over first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. yardage and be backed up to the 25. He Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Second and 12 at the 25-yard line. Behind the chain, second and 12. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. That's caught by his tight end, Uzama. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. Yeah, that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. Oh, that was a pretty route right there, because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Part of their struggles last week was getting these negative plays on first and second down. That's something they have to be wary of as this game continues. Second and 11. Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Six. The Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. 56 the mark, boys. Look. Check 57 to 60. Back to 60. Go. 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 Slam. Slam. They snapped that at one. Now it's Burrow. He's got his man. Boy. 
Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That's a third down conversion to 24 yards there. Nice play. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, stepping back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. In Jacksonville territory now. Here's a first and 10 at the 34. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. This one grabbed by A.J. Green. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. Mixon with a first down carry. And able to get about three as he's taken down right at the 20. He's brought down. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short game. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback, makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Second and seven from the 20. inside the 20 and down to the 18. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. Third and Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing, and I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. Play number nine now on this pretty long opening drive, but this is third down. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. Timmy Jernigan with a sack. They just gave up a sack there, and if I'm not mistaken, they gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. And they're just looking really porous, aren't they? They really are, and I'm wondering if they're going to have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, maybe a back, someone to help assist, because right now, the quarterback's been getting hit a lot in the last couple of games. So an empty possession there. What do you think went wrong, Charles? Well, it looked like maybe the plant leg might have given way just a little, and when that happens, guys have a tendency to pull through the ball to compensate. And in doing so, sent this one off target. Minshew going to lead up the Jaguars first and 10 at the 33-yard line. A first carry for Leonard Fournette. Sean Williams with the tackle. He led the Bengals in that category last year. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Coming up on second and seven. Looking to throw it, Minshew. 
The Vago pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Carl Lawson with a little how do you do as he gets in there for the sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football before he knew it. He was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Third and long after the sack, tough road for Minshew and the Jags. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. After the delay, they're backed up even further for third and long. To Thompson on the draw. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. And their opening drive here is going to result in a punt. They got seven yards there, but not enough. Well, the guys who are paid to make the tackles deserve some kudos there, but I think they deserve even bigger ones because in that situation, they had to be thinking pass. Loosened up defense, going to pass coverage. Instead, maybe they surprised him a little bit running the ball, yet they rallied to it and stopped him well short of a first down. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. At their own 31-yard line. The Bengals drive about to get going. Now they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? Takes this one across the 35 to the 36, a gain of about four. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Second down now, Bernard. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. And the Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. Oh, he may have gotten lucky. Tried to dump it off underneath on the check down. Nearly picked instead it's incomplete. Looks like a second empty possession to start the game and certainly not the way you want to start when you come in off of a loss last week. Every team talks about starting fast. They're hoping on their next possession, it can be a delayed fast start and get them going. He punted four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. It's a 42-yard punt, but eight on the return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. 26-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet. 
and say, this is what the problem is. Now let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit better. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Fournette running out of the gun. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. A nickel look now for the Bengals as they try to stop them here on third down. Shotgun handoff to Thompson. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Four yards on the pickup, and it'll move the chains. I like the look that they just showed there. When you come out in a passing formation, spread things out a little bit, makes it really hard to cover the middle of the field, doesn't it? Because yeah. you got to go out to the perimeter and cover those guys. Yep, exactly. Got some good blocking, too. Helped him pick up the first. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Gun men shoot to throw. He'll fire one deep for Westbrook. Yeah, man, it's caught inside the 10. And they're going to have this way down in Cincinnati territory. First and goal, Jacksonville. That's a big time pitch and catch right there. And partner, I remember the days when quarterbacks would try this. They were holding their breath. But nowadays, they're counting on their receiver to be just a little bit better than the defensive back when it's one on one and the ball's in the air like that. First and goal from the six. Out of the gun is Minshew. Back of the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. up on a second and six. On the carry, Thompson. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. Well, he did get a taste the previous week. He got into the end zone, trying his best to get there in this game. So far, he's been denied. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Minshew sets to throw. And that'll bring up fourth down as his Cincy defense stands up on third. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. So on fourth down, Jags kicker Josh Lambeau comes on from the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. 
And Lambeau will put this one through. And the Jaguars grab a 3 0 lead. So still no touchdowns in the first half, but we do have some action on the scoreboard with the field goal. So maybe now the mentality changes in this game because anytime you can get to the red zone and if you don't come away with six points, you feel like it's a disappointment. In a game like this one, being able to kick field goals means you're right there and then you're just looking for that big break to take you over the top. First and 10 at their own 27 yard line. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul searching now? I would say so. And they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot position. more than normal. Put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. The false start backs him up five. First and 15. After the penalty, it's Nixon. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. Taven Bryan with a nice play defensively. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. Throw on second down. Going deep downfield for Ross. And that's going to be incomplete. Burrows good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Well, sometimes those cliches really come true, don't they, when they talk about it takes all 11 to play good defense. We've seen that in this ball game. I think the secondary has to be singled out, though. They are in the presence of every receiver whenever the ball's thrown, and this one, they help force another incompletion. Now Joe Burrow on third and long. And able to find Green. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. The defense shaking their heads. Not aggressive enough, and they allow him to convert a third and 18. First down, Mixon. And that is not a sight they want to see. Joe Mixon, very slow to get up. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Second down and five. Let's go, defense. Let's go, defense. And here we go. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. And his throw is incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of, you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught, they've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Now it's Burrow. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Timmy Jernigan able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. Punting now is Huber as he sends it away. And this one will be touched down inside the 40-yard line. First and 10 at their own 37-yard line. Ready, ready. 
Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. A false start backs him up five. First and 15. Here's Minshew. Looking long for Westbrook. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far. But on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Now Minshew. That's to his running back, Leonard Fournette. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. But it's third down. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. And Eifert has it. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. His first catch, good for 14 there, and a first down. First down, Jaguars. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Fournette, a first down carry. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. Tackle man. That's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. A shotgun give to Fournette. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Well, that rate picking up three yards of carry, you and I both know that doesn't cut it in this league in trying to get first downs unless you're playing four-down football. Then that's a whole different situation, but I don't think that's what they're trying to do here. Third and four, though, is still manageable. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. The catch made by James O'Shaughnessy, the tight end. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 22-yard line. 13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They run it here with Thompson. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. Sean Brennan, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. At the Bengals' 19-yard line. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven.
And that ball is caught by DJ Chark for the Jags touchdown. To DJ Chark. DJ Chark, his first touchdown on the year. And the Jaguars add on to their lead. All the receivers in the league are plenty good enough. Otherwise, they wouldn't make it in the NFL. But the ones that go to the Pro Bowl, they have refined route running ability. Point after by Lambeau, up and good. And the lead grows to 10 0. Taken about seven yards deep. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. 25 yard line. The Bengals drive about to get going. Nothing for them yet from an offensive standpoint. Down 10 zip as they come up first and 10. Here's Burrow. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That goes for a gain of 31. First and 10 at the 44-yard line. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Play action. It's Burrow. And he's going to be swallowed up. Sacked back at the 45-yard line. That's Yannick Ngakwe with a sack. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Burrow on play action. He's going to air it out deep for Green. And that'll be incomplete. Burrow took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. But one thing's for sure, when you've got a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you got to give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Burrow looking to pass. He gets this one to Boyd. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 33. It's a gain of 22 as we tick towards the two-minute warning. At the 33-yard line. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. 10-0, our score. Come on now, let's go. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. They will throw on first down with Burrow. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Throwing again, it's Burrow. On the screen, Bernard. He'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. A second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. 56 to Mike, boy. 56. Check 56. Watch this. Go. Kill, kill, kill. Kill, kill. Under. Right there, right there. 
Again, it's Burrow. Got a man, it's Ross, complete. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. First and 10, Joe Burrow. And now he'll tuck it and run. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. And 10 at the Jaguars' 21-yard line. On second down, here's Burrow. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked by Jared Wilson, and he returns it here to his own 18-yard line. The rookie was trying to push it downfield, but the safety bit him. And he'll learn that you have to hold the safety. And you do that with your head movement, your eyes, sometimes your shoulders. Hold the safety so that you can get back to the throw that you really want to make. He got so excited thinking his guy was open that he made it easy for the defensive back to go get the football. And he'll let this one go deep for Chark. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the former first-rounder, Trey Waynes. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. The Bengals take over first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. You've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half. You're well on your own side of the field. What are we doing here, Coach Davis? Well, I'm trying something on first down. And it's something that's safe. It's something that's been done many times before. A lot of people... Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. A hole to dig out of here, second and 17. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. Now they set up the screen, that's complete. A good job defensively to hold that to four yards, and now it's third down. It's a gain of four. Brings up third and 12. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. To kick off for Cincinnati. The Jaguars in possession of the lead, and they will get the football as we are underway in the second half. And that's going to hit in the end zone. as we restart things here in the second half with a touchback. 